Welcome to Forgotten But Funky, the show where we talk about albums that I found in years of digging through record shops in this here city they call Munich and some other cities maybe as well. Albums that didn't reach classic status, albums that didn't get a cult audience, albums that were forgotten but by time but still are cool and worth checking out, especially if you want to have a, maybe have a record collection. It's a bit off the beaten path, but still has good music in it, of course, and not only good covers. But today, good music and good covers united in this here record called Computed Man by the one and only Xin. What do we see on the, on the record cover? And Sailor Man in Donald Duck dress holding a robot on a marionette. Is that what you call it in English? I hope so. But now on the flip side of the album we see that same huge robot with the small Sailor Man here. So who is the computed man, the robot, or the man? A bit of additional information. It's marketed by Phonogram. It was released on Vertigo. Here we have it, Vertigo. Here you see the musicians Kurt Kress, Christian Schulze, Benny Gebauer playing the saxophone, and Xin himself providing vocals and keyboard. What do we have here? It's an album of in my opinion, great craft work influenced synth pop. It was released in 1981. That might be a bit of a important thing to say now. It's 1981 and it's released by this guy called Michael Winter. Michael Winter is from Munich, the city where I live. And in 1970s he had a concept for a show that combined music and light installations and film projections and miming and fragments of theater and masks and costumes and after a while he mixed those things up and produced a huge live show which is forgotten by time but probably was quite cool. This is actually his second album but his more successful one. The first one is called Dreams About Reality, also was released in Vertigo, but this is the second one from 1981 and his more well-known one, if you can call it that. So I told you it's quite early synth pop with, yeah, so in a way that the synths and keyboards still sound quite craft worky his vocals sometimes try to emulate a bit of David Bowie, I think. Never up to Klaus Nomi standards, but the music maybe is a bit Klaus Nomi similar. Um, yes. The whole theme of this album, as you can see by Computed Man here, is technology, robots, what Nowadays we call it retrofuturism. If you if you're up in that, if you like this, this might be your thing. Now let's take a, sh a closer look at D and Lay. What do we have here? Side A. We have six songs on side A. A few liner notes, and what do we see here again? The robot and an X-ray of a rib cage. Quite cool. I think. I'll just talk about the songs by now. No, a few funny thing about the credits here. You see the sunlight and the strings take part take part in this in this recording. The Tegernsee Kantorei, which is funny because Tegernsee is quite a picturesque small Bavarian village, and they have a choir, and this choir took part in creating this science fiction pop masterpiece that we have in front of us here. No, it's not a masterpiece, but it's Really funny. So, the whole LP starts with the song Return to Space. It's more or less a sound ambience of the rehearsal of a band and a choir, and then all of a sudden a huge chorus starts in, and it's beautiful and unexpected, and I really like it. It's nothing you would put on as a DJ, but it's really cool. The second one, 
the title track of the album, Computed Man, is what I would say early robotic funk in the way that Herbie Hancock's is. The vocals here remind me a bit of the resident with the you know this a bit eerie foreboding atmosphere in the vocals that this resident use so often. It's quite a minimalist, a cold song. It has a great saxophone solo in the end which makes it a bit cheesy but great. If you like 80s stuff this might be really up your alley. And the lyrics are funny. Small excerpt maybe here. Let me introduce you to another kind of man. Program to the future, extraordinary plant. An achievement of technology, it's really to adore. He's solving any problems till 2084. And so on. It's a cool song. The next song, The Wishful Marionette, is already the song I have the most problems with on this recording, as it really doesn't fit into the rest of the album. It's a string quartet, which reminds me of yeah, it's a string quartet, and his his vocals have huge amounts of reverb in it. It's in German, my mother tongue, and I don't understand a single word that's uttered. Es war ein Mann, ein Marionettenmann aus bloßem Holz mit Messe, and so on, because it's so much reverb on it. It reminds me of, if you know it, that one Elvis Costello album he did with the Brodsky Quartet called The Juliet Letters, I think. It also reminds me of, quite sim it's really quite similar to, the song Smithers Jones by The Jam, but The Jam doesn't use this much of reverb, but it's a great song. It just doesn't fit into the rest of the album. It has this existential theme. Are we robots? Are we controlled by the technology we create? Or are we still the controllers? So it's a cool song, but it doesn't fit the album. Number four, again, is, the, is already a second highlight for me. It's called School Days. It's super cool. Sometimes I DJ and this is a song I really like to use. It's funny, it has a bit of a bopping vibe to it. The chorus is sung with children and the lyrics are alphabetically, which might be a bit cringy at times, like here you see a like apple and B like B, believe in this society, C like candy and D like doll, democracy gives free for all. School days. Um, anyway, it's a it's a it's a really funny song. It doesn't have to be super deep and philosophical to be a good song. So, don't mind the, the the lyrics. The ending also is something to mention. As suddenly the whole song turns into sounds of a bus saw and a quite brutal one at that, and you hear children screaming. So it's a mixture of. <laughs> Yeah, the end. This song ends with children being sawed in half. No, it's... yeah, I think that's what the song wants to insinuate. And it's a funny, funny ending at that as well. So, great bopper for any DJ party you might want to host. Number five, Kaleidoscope Worlds is... has a brooding intro, a relaxing saxophone part, cheesy 80s soundtrack vibes with synth strings, a bit of a musical feeling, and when it's in full bloom, it sounds a bit like a rip-off of Young Americans by David Bowie. The the cold synth parts go a bit more in the background, the saxophone cheesiness is a bit more in the forefront, but it's a cool song at that. I think it's a bit too long with eight minutes, but it's okay. Rhyme With You is a short ballad -esque ending to side A. So what do we have on side B? <gasps> it's... The background, as you can see, might be an X-ray of a robot, you're seeing microchips. And here you see the silhouette of the man, and not of the robot. So, quite a huge... The concept is in this inlay as well, which I like. <laughs> um, yes, we have a song called Television Madness, starting off this side, which is cool. The song is a bit lame. It's more a recital than a vocal line. You, He just reads this in his a bit cold, mime-esque German accent accented voice. But it's a good song. It has a sha la 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 chorus. It infused a bit a sense of escapism in me. And in the end, there's a cool destruction 
ambience of this song, so I liked it in a way. The next song, I'm sorry that I go by this through this song by song, but I really like it that way. And I think there are not so many highlights and the rest can be forgotten, but it's quite a cohesive album, coherent and good. <laughs> Jet Set Honey is the fastest song on the album. It has a bit of a weird and mathy vocal arrangement, which doesn't make it a bopper as School Days, but it's still quite a good song. The funny thing about this, if you know the band or the artist Fat Gadget and his song Luxury, Luxury, this song has, even though it's earlier than Luxury, a rather similar decadent luxurious Dolce Vita Ibiza cocaine soul emptiness <laughs> feeling to it. And yes, that's. I like this atmosphere, especially if it's used in 80s synth pop songs, this feeling of people dancing, cocaine snorted up on dance floors, not knowing which day it is and if they even enjoy their situation, but dancing the night away. <laughs> and this is, yeah, this is a compliment from me. <laughs> um, the next song, Isolated Brain, is one of my highlights from this side, maybe it's the highlight from this side. It starts with quite idyllic bird sounds, then suddenly it bursts into dramatic start-stop dynamics, has cool stereo effects, and very wholesome, a very wholesome chorus melody again with children singing. Maybe children from Tegernsee, where people talk English a bit like this, you know, a bit Schwarzenegger-like, but a bit more Bavarian than Austrian, maybe a bit like I do. And here it says, I should read you the lyrics, and they really are funny, especially the first two verses. I had a car crash and I lost my head. Thought by myself, oh gosh, you're really dead. My body landed on a lovely birch. My head rolled to the house of brain research. They picked him up and then my skull was chilled. A jar with nutritive solution filled. Put in my brain and fixed a lot of sounds to get a feedback from my underground. Yes, I think it's a cool... Those are cool lyrics. <laughs> Number 10. The Lonely Electron. As you can see, it's... 36 seconds long, is a short and somehow jazzy synth music hall song. It's cool but forgettable. It doesn't flow, doesn't stop the flow of this album, so it's okay. The next one, Radioactive Raindrops, puts a bit the synth pop aside and steps more into prog rock territory. I think that the, topics, the topic is cool that there is evil rain <laughs> or radioactive rain coming from the sky and people don't know it. It's actually done six years before Chernobyl or Pripyat or whatever you want to call it. So it might be, uh, yes, foreboding, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what to say. It was six years before Chernobyl. I don't want to spin out a huge con conspiracy out of this album. <laughs> Uh, it has a quite a dangerous sound to it. It the structure is a bit s sweet suit like that. You have lots of parts that don't repeat themselves. It's not your verse chorus verse chorus bridge chorus song. It's cool. It's a bit overladen, but it's a good song. The ending, the outro is again for some reason a reprise of that string quartet song where which I said didn't fit into the rest of the album so I, d I don't really know why he did it and you yeah those the string quartet is the background and in the foreground you hear people saying hey thanks goodbye was great blah 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 and going home so it doesn't end with this computed man theme which I think is a bit weird but decisions were made you know by Xin and Ulrich A. Rudolf and so now we have this so overall I think this is a really cool album if you are into synth pop. It's easily matchable with the likes of early Deepish Mode. Or if you like the first Heaven 17 album, I think you might also like this. I mean, the Heaven 17 album doesn't have this computer future type of theme, but it has a bit of a lighthearted thing. You know, lots of those early bands, they wanted to tell you that they've seen the abyss and they've come out changed. 
But this one I think is a bit more about entertainment and fun and goofiness as you saw in the lyrics. Maybe a bit mixed with a small satirical, philosophical, sociological message about man losing his conscience or losing his self in the grips of growing technology. Oh boy, what am I blabbering about? Anyway, it's a cool record. I think if you like Klaus Nomi, if you like Joe Breyer, if you like David Bowie, this might be something you want to check out. Just for fun and for vinyl porn, i show you the vinyl as well. That's the the label by Vertigo. I think it's a Vertigo um, label, but the space theme really fits the album. Side one looks like this as well. So that was my first episode. I hope to get better. I hope to speak more fluently in the upcoming ones. But this is the first episode of Forgotten But Funky with me and Xin's Computed Man from 1981 in Munich. Bye bye.